Oh, that's the million billion dollar question, right? I think some of the confusion people have over the term metaverse is the fact that different people and different companies are defining it differently. For some people, it's all about the next evolution of virtual reality or augmented reality. And for some people, it's about this idea of an immersive internet. And for some people, they're even using the term ambient computing, whatever that means. Uh, the other problem, and one of the reasons why we haven't agreed on this, is because whatever the metaverse becomes, we're right now at the very early stages of it. So it'd be kind of like go, traveling back to 1990 and asking people what the internet's going to be like in 2022. They're not going to use terms like Google and Facebook and cat videos. They'll, they'll have no idea. Or looking at a baby and being able to say it with any certainty what the adult baby is going, the adult is going to be like that comes from that baby which I can appreciate is not the answer you were looking for, Rob. So, so let and me you, try this. You made this clear and when we were discussing this segment beforehand. You said, all right, you'll take a stab at it, but you knew that that part of the answer, which was good, would still not be entirely satisfying. So right, yes. keep going. Let's go for the satisfying answer. <laughs> it's a shared virtual world where you can interact with other people, places, and things through your avatar or your digital self. And if you ever read the book, or the terrible film adaptation of Ready Player One. There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere. Except the Oasis. When they put on their goggles and they enter the Oasis, that's pretty much what I think a lot of people are thinking about when they're thinking about the metaverse. If we're gonna to try to understand something, it always helps if we can understand the name, where the name comes from, what it signifies, so what, what is the story? What does the term metaverse mean? Where does that name come from? Yeah, it comes from science fiction. It comes from a novel called Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. And in the novel, it was a combination of virtual reality, augmented reality, and the internet. So basically, people took this idea and just said, well, let's make it real, which is a lot of how it happens. Science fiction becomes science fact. A lot of what we've heard about the metaverse, it all sounds very theoretical, very futuristic. Are there working examples of the metaverse that exist right now? I would say yes, there absolutely are. And again, it does depend on your definition, but when you think about, there's a lot of virtual worlds out there. And one of the earlier ones being Second Life and people not through an Oculus pair of goggles, but just through their computer screen would create an avatar and they would travel this world that was being created by other people. And even businesses set up shop there. And there are tons of virtual worlds right now that are just like that. And that's very much a version, a smaller version of the metaverse. Um, when you think about games like Fortnite and the fact that they have these real world performers doing virtual concerts there that you can buy tickets to and attend, you know, that's another version of the metaverse or anytime you slap on those Oculus VR headsets and a a lot of video games, when you go online and you're sharing that experience with other people, whether it's Roblox or even World of Warcraft, those are all today versions of the metaverse. A lot of tech companies are really interested in the potential of the metaverse. Why? What is it that is so intriguing to them? Money. Mostly, I would say, uh, just like the early days of the Internet, where there was a land grab and everybody wanted to own the Internet or some small part of it. It's the next frontier. There's so much opportunity there. And so these companies, whether it's Facebook, a.k.a. Meta or Microsoft or Google or Apple, they want to sell you something there. Maybe they want to sell you the hardware so you can access the metaverse. Maybe they want to sell you the bandwidth or the processing power so that you can really enjoy it. And once you're there, maybe you're going to buy their virtual products or buy real estate so you can live next virtually next to Snoop Dogg or whatever it may be. They're there and ready to sell you all these products and they want to be there first so they can set up their shop before anybody else does. All right. Well, you've got your own shop. You've got a digital agency. You're the 207 tech guy. So you have to keep an eye on these things and sort of weed out what's legitimate in its potential and what is maybe kind of not something that's going to really happen. What's your take on it? Well, I guess I should preface this by saying the first time I saw email, I thought it was a dumb idea and it wouldn't catch on. But that being said, <laughs> good call. Um, I, yeah, exactly. I think this is a pretty compelling idea. 
but I think we're a long way away from something that feels like science fiction or Ready Player One. I think there's got to be huge leaps in the hardware and in the processing power so people can really enjoy this. But in the short run, I think that there's a lot of opportunity in gaming because we're not expecting a real world experience. We're expecting a virtual experience there um, in entertainment. Like the idea that all of us could go watch the Super Bowl from the 50 yard line or the players uh, bench or even through the eyes of the quarterback. That's a pretty amazing idea. And I don't think we're too far off from that. 